So, here's the real question. How do dentists like you, who aren't willing to let insurance dictate how you will run your practice, who want to create incredibly profitable practices without sacrificing your time or sanity, how do you create the strategies to ensure your practice not only survives, but thrives in the 21st century? That's the blaring question. And Dr. Steve Shalins is here to provide the answers. Welcome to Dental Practice Freedom Radio. What's up, everybody? This is Dr. Steve Schultz. I want to welcome you back to another episode of Dental Practice Freedom Radio. And uh, I just got to a hotel. I'm going to be flying out early tomorrow, uh, heading back up to the Northeast, and uh, really excited about that. And uh, at 8 o'clock tonight, it is 7.06. At 8 o'clock, I will be um, jumping on a Q&A call with uh, a group of dentists that are going through a uh, technical uh, training curriculum a continuing education program, and uh, I'm trying to help them out with case acceptance. And so I was invited to speak at that and, and just basically answer questions they had. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pumped about that. I, I just love talking. You know, case acceptance is my thing. And uh, I've learned what not to do, what to do. And when it comes to comprehensive case acceptance, right, full mouth rehabilitations, uh, large scale, you know, treatment plans, sleep apnea, things of that nature, you start to get these treatment plans about five, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars. The ball game changes. Uh, if you guys have ever read the book Spin Selling, you know that when that um, treatment plan goes up in price, the sales process has to change, guys. You you can't you can't present a fee, a fee on a crown the same way that you present a full mouth rehabilitation. But strangely, most dentists don't really understand that, <laughs> and I'm like. You know, that's, that's part of your problem. The structure of your process doesn't make any sense. It's not, it's not psychologically correct for a patient. And, um, you know, if anybody, if you were trying to sell something uh, other than a car, I think a car is the only time that people actually, you know, spend 50, 60 grand on a car and they don't even think twice about it because it can be financed at 0.9%. But, you know, it, it is what it is. But anyway, that's not why I wanted to hop on this podcast episode. The, the reason I wanted to hop on this podcast episode is because this is actually something that I have found myself um, struggling more now with than at any other point in time, and it is because I'm juggling two businesses right now. I have my practice, um, and then I also have my coaching business, and I find that <coughs> so, <coughs> sorry, um, I find that I have some like dead times, right? Five, ten, fifteen minute intervals. And we get this a lot in dentistry. Um, it's actually, you know, people ask, you, what's what's the hardest thing about dentistry? And is it the patients? Is it the the work? Is you know, physically, it's a little bit taxing. If you're doing dentistry all day, every day, that that does get taxing. Um, uncertainty. People ask, is it uncertainty? You know, because some things can go right, and wrong. And you're dealing with the biology, and it's no, it's really not that. I I think for me, uh, one of my biggest struggles actually in in dentistry has been um, those five and 10 minute windows and switching hats. Uh, so if you've ever read Gerber's work with E-Myth, basically you have three hats that you put on. You, you put on this leader hat, you put on this technician hat, you put on the manager hat. And it's your ability to switch hats that takes that, uh, that's mentally exhausting actually to go from technician to leader. And you might get a question from your team about going from technician to leader or back, you're trying to do some strategic vision planning for your practice, and then your assistant comes in or your hygienist comes in and asks about Mrs. Smith and tooth number three. Um, I used to get really not not annoyed, not bitter, not any of those things, but just it would take a lot of energy out of me, and I'd, I'd get really emotionally drained, and I still do at some capacity. Uh, I've just learned to, to let some things go and uh, have gotten better in that process, but the reason I bring this up is because those minutes in between things are gold. So the first thing that you really want to be doing, and this is the interesting part. So in my practice, when I was, you know, really, really going after coaching and say, you know what, this is, this is the time. This is the year. I know I can help dentists uh, increase their comprehensive case acceptance. I put a process in place to help them do that. I need to be going full bore on this. What's amazing is the first thing that happened is I took my practice 
and I actually went from having an associate to not having an associate again and said, listen, I need, a, I actually need more control over this right now, not less, because I need to make sure that when this practice is operating and running, it's operating very, very at peak performance and efficiency. And then when I get it where I want to go, then I can open up that window and avenue again to bring in on an associate. And, uh, you know, when I had an associate, I'll just be honest, I loved my associate. I have nothing but good things to say about him. But I was not ready for an associate. And the practice wasn't ready for the associate. I didn't have the systems in place good enough myself to be able to teach those to the associate. And that was a couple of years ago. Um, now I think it'd be a totally different story. But it's only because I went back in my practice and really refined what I was doing and saying, okay, so how is this going to work um, that I'd be able to bring the associate on now? And the first thing I did is I said, okay, we're working four days a week. Uh, let's get down to three days a week clinically. And now we're down to two days a week clinically, even though we are technically in the office three. We work a half day Monday, a full day Tuesday, a half day Wednesday. And uh, what's interesting is uh, we made more, we're making more money doing that than when we worked at four. And you might ask yourself, well, how does that happen? That happens, you know, or did you just raise your fees? Honestly, we just raised our fees, I think, 3%. From every year, we raise them anywhere between 3 and 5%. So it's really not that big of a deal. And we actually increased our um, our profitability this uh, this past year. This is not to brag, um, but 20%. It was, 20, it was a 20% increase in collections from one year to the next. And the profitability went up at least 20%, probably closer to 20 or 25% from the year prior. And I believe one of the reasons is we got laser focused on time management. Now, what's interesting is that part of the practice is working well. But I've always tried to figure out, what do you do with those five and 10 minute blocks that are in between patients, um, in between questions from teams, and, and you really don't have enough time to do the strategic work that's necessary to grow? And you said, well, maybe I can just do notes and charts and all that stuff. Here's what I found you can do. This is actually a simple thing that you can do. One is rewrite your goals down. Between those five and 10 minute blocks, rewrite your goals. They actually get you subconsciously trained to start thinking about your goal 24 seven, which is the most important thing you can do. If you have a goal about your pr uh, production in your office or your personal life or your other businesses or whatever you're doing, the more you can write that goal down, the more you internalize and emotionalize that goal, the faster you'll move towards it. So that's the first thing you can do. The second thing you can do is actually time block out and say, you know what, really, let's try to maximize this. So instead of having five and 10 minute blocks that I can't really fill stuff in um, during that time period, let's try to eliminate those completely. That helps. Uh, the third thing you can do is try to figure out where are some like 30 and 40 minute blocks so you're also not utilizing this time. I'll give you a great example. I got in the hotel at 7.12, 7.09 or whatever that was. I have a call at 8 o'clock. What am I going to do during this time? Am I going to read? Am I going to study? What am I going to do? So let's record a podcast episode. I can get a podcast episode done in 10 to 15 minutes. I can edit it in five minutes, and I can uh, pop it out to the publishing um, platform in another five minutes. That still puts me at 7, uh, 7.30, and now I can read for a little bit, get centered before I go and, and give value to the clients that I'm going to be serving tonight. So. You want to be thinking about all these time, uh, these time elements that are in your day that take up a lot of time that you can either eliminate or try to really think about how do you maximize this time. And I would do goal striving activities at that point. This is not like reading. This is what are, what are activities that I can take on a daily basis that might only take five to 10 minutes of my time that will move me closer to the goal that I keep writing down. And one of those exercises was write the goal down, keep writing the goal down, keep writing the goal down. The second thing is a podcast episode. I can get in front of more people. I can talk about some of the things that I'm passionate about. It's a goal achieving activity, right? Zoning out and watching TV is not a goal achieving activity, so I shouldn't do that, okay? So you want to really be looking at the times that you're in the practice. How can I maximize these five and 10 minute blocks, right? not just sit around and hop on Facebook. Although I do that occasionally, I do. I'll be the first to admit, I do it a lot. It's a habit I'm trying to break. But it, I was, I was, as I was writing down my goals, I'm like, you know, this is interesting. I keep writing down this goal, but I'm doing some things that are contradictory to the goal. So I need to either reset my goal or stop doing the things that are contradictory to my goal. 
that's when you get laser focused on your goal, what actually happens, right? You subconsciously start to move away things that away from things that are not going to serve you in hitting your goal. And then the second thing, like I said, is, is really find out these bigger chunks of time. What are you doing on a daily basis that's actually causing you to waste your time? And how do you change it? I went and walked over to, I know this is a longer episode, but this is, I hope this is valuable for you guys. I walked over to Dunkin' Donuts today to get an iced coffee. I used to sit and drive to Dunkin' Donuts and get iced coffees in the morning. And then I did one simple thing. I actually tracked how long that took me to do that on a daily basis. It was about 23 or 24 minutes a day. I was either on my way to a Dunkin' Donuts, sitting in line to get my iced coffee, or coming out and trying to get back into the flow of traffic to get back to my work. 23 minutes a day. 23 minutes a day. I don't care what you, I don't care if you're listening to audiobooks or not. That's a, it's a, that's a waste of time, right? So you don't want to be wasting times in that block. So either learn how to make your own iced coffee or figure out, is it really worth 23 minutes of my time every day to get that iced coffee? And pretty soon the answer is no. So you just stop doing it, right? That's the other part. It's the knowing doing gap. Now I know I shouldn't be doing it. Am I actually not doing it, right? So. Think about how you're utilizing your time on a daily basis. This is like one of those quick reminders. You guys already know this, but like really analyze, how am I using my time every day? And, and if anybody ever calls me and says, hey, Steve, I just don't, I don't know. I, For example, I hear this all the time with potential clients. I'd love to do your coaching program. I, I have the money to do it. Um, I know this is going to help me. I just don't know if I have the time. You got the time. You just, you just need to actually do a time study and figure out where you're actually spending your time. Everybody's got the time. You're just choosing other activities that are more important than the thing that I'm um, offering you in terms of coaching. And most of the time, you know, is is coaching worth the 23 minutes of sitting in a Dunkin' Donuts line? Like, what's more important, the, the iced coffee or the coaching? Right. So you really want to be transparent with your time to yourself so that you can start to do more goal achieving activities. So. Hopefully you got value out of this maximum timed effective podcast episode. Uh, thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, if you guys are getting value out of this podcast, I'd really appreciate a review and a rating um, on whatever platform you're using, iTunes, it doesn't matter. Um, I would love to hear from you guys. If you have questions for me directly, you can always send me an email to admin at mountainskycoaching.com. And one of the things that I'm doing right now, if you guys are listening, I'm actually doing complimentary coaching calls to anybody that is interested that's either A, a client already and is trying to figure out how to get to the next level, or B, is somebody that's interested in any of the things that I'm doing, whether it's through case acceptance with Dental Sales Secrets or um, I work with Bob Proctor and thinking into results. I highly encourage you to just reach out to me. We can set up a complimentary coaching call. I'm doing these for the first 10 people. Um, so they're going to fill up really, really fast to send out an email a couple of days ago and, and spots are already filled. So they're almost gone, but I really want to reach out to you guys, the listeners to see how can I best help you. And, uh, this is a great, great way for us to get to know each other a little bit better and, uh, how I can create maximum value for you. So I'm going to send, I'm going to put a link up at the end of this podcast episode. You will be able to go there. Uh, it is my, uh, calendar that you're going to be able to directly book a call from me. And as soon as you do, I'll reach out with you, make sure that you got the necessary information for the call so we can have a maximum um, effectiveness when we're on that call together. So uh, hopefully you get value out of this one and uh, I'll see you at the next episode. Thank you so much for listening to this episode on Dental Practice Freedom Radio with Dr. Steve Schulentz. We'll see you on the next episode.